is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, this is The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I am best-selling author and Ramsey personality, Rachel Cruz, and next to me in the co-host chair is Dr. John Deloney today. How are you? Doing good. How yeah, are you? Good. Awesome. Well, we're going to get to the calls, you guys, and give us, yeah, give us a call if you have any questions about your life, your money anything. Uh, John and I are talking about money and marriage a lot these days. So if you got questions about relationships and all of that, let's just dive in. So you can give us a call at 888-825-5225. All right. Up next, or up first, I should say, is Drew from Pittsburgh. Hey, Drew, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Absolutely. How can we help? Uh, So my question for you is in regards to uh, life insurance. Yes. And uh, just to kind of lay out for you the picture here, uh, my wife and I got married last July. We have our first child on the way due in May. Yeah, awesome. And uh, God willing, we're hoping for more children over the next 10 years. Um, I'm 33. My wife is 30. And uh, right now I'm trying to get in the position, you know, set up uh, with life insurance and just kind of wondering the best, um, how long I should get that for uh, based upon, I know you said, it should be 10 to 12 uh, times your annual salary, and then uh, really until your your children are out of the house. Uh, so looking to, you know, the fact that we'll be having kids in the next 10 years, then would we be needing to get a 30-year uh, policy? Yeah, it's a great question. So when it comes to life insurance, so it's either, yeah, when, not, when someone is not dependent upon your income anymore, or you become self-insured. So where are you guys at financially? Do you guys have, are you in debt? What, do you own a home? Uh, so we are not in any debt. We just bought a home. So we have a mortgage for 150000 Okay. But no debt. That's awesome. An emergency fund and all of that. Correct. Yeah, we okay. have about 70000 in the bank. Oh, that's great, man. Yeah, congrats. That's that's huge. So what I would do is, I mean, with life insurance, and can, obviously the younger you are, the healthier you are, the cheaper it's going to be, even with term life. So um so if I were you, I would overshoot probably what you need, but you guys can sit there and do the math and think, okay, if we do baby steps four, five, and six, how long will it take us to pay off the home? How long will it take us to build an amount of money in, in our investments that we're comfortable with, that if something were to happen to you, if you were the only one bringing in an income, or if your wife works, something happens to her, and look to see where do we feel comfortable sitting if we had no life insurance? Like if you have a paid for house and you got $2 million in investments, mm-hmm. Pretty great, right? So so I would look and kind of say, okay, in the next 20 years, well, what does our life look like financially as much as you can? And then determine from there. Um, so I hope that helps, Drew. And Drew, I just redid mine. And for what it's worth, I'm taking myself through 60. And I hope that yeah. um, the, and you're young enough that the policy will be so inexpensive. It'll, it'll still cost you money, but it's going to be so inexpensive to run you through 60 years old. Yes. Right? Yep. And hopefully by then, if I become independently wealthy at 50, I won't pay the last 10 years or I'll cancel the plan or whatever. And we'll call it good. But um, that's what I did in my house. Yeah. And when you can lock in the rates, I mean, with term life, which is great, Drew, that that's what you're leaning toward. That's that's what we recommend. Uh, because it is so inexpensive to your point. I'm like, you almost could just pay it and have a policy on each other just right. in case, you know, like mom and dad, we always laugh because dad still has life insurance on him because mom <laughs> wants it. She's like, I don't care what we have. I just want to know that if something happens to you, there's some extra cash coming just in case. So, so yeah, it's one of those things. It's inexpensive, uh, especially if you're young and healthy that go ahead and just, yeah, I would, I would overshoot it if you could. It's a great question, Drew. All right. Next is Nick from Philadelphia. Hey, Nick, how are you? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. How can we um, help? Yeah, so uh, my wife and I are baby step two. Um, I've been turned on to you guys for a couple months now. We've really kind of gone crazy. Um, the big thing that we've done that's made a huge difference is we finally combined all our finances and got totally on the same page financially. Um, awesome. and Way to amazing. go, man. That's hard. Way to go. <laughs> yeah, and we should have done it years ago. But <laughs> Hey, but here you are now. Yeah, you're here now. Um, 
Yeah. So my question, though, um, my wife and I each own our own independent small business, and we don't materially participate in each other's business. How should we think about like the spouse's input in a situation like that? It's a great question. Why are you laughing? <laughs> because <laughs> it's funny. well, because in my house. I debate the amount of input I have like on what we're getting at the grocery store. <laughs> Let so, alone running a business. <laughs> just my initial input, Nick, is none. Unless it's unless somebody asks you, right? Like you're the you're the CEO of your business and I, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, Rachel, but if I'm the CEO of my business and you're the CEO of your business and we're close friends, I mean if you ask me your my opinion on your business, great. Sure. But I'm not gonna get involved there. No, but I do think in a marriage, there's obvious strengths and weaknesses each person has. So, like, I would know if I was running a business, there are certain parts of Winston's brain that I would want to that know. What want. He th- that's yeah, right. that's that right. I'm like, no, I want, I, I want that thought, or what would you do here, you know, and vice versa. So, I think it's, um, I mean, I think the rule of thumb always so, with advice. Yeah. Do you have a specific thing in mind, brother, that happened? Well, what's what happening? Is, what is, no, I mean, nothing like. There's nothing like contentious going on, but I don't want to get to that situation ever. There you go. Um, but one of the things that does come up is like the concept of like business expenses. Um, like if I would want to buy a new computer for the business or she would want to do like advertising for the business, how should we think of that um, when we could not spend those things on the business and, you know, pay down some debt? Uh, okay. So that's kind of something I'm kind of struggling with a little bit. So I think it's important that you two, with your business, your business pays you a salary. And that salary is what you take home and you put into the general pot. And if there's a... Bottom line, meaning you're just going to take X percent of the per, of the overall revenue of your business, and that's what your take home is going to be. So, not buying a computer would actually provide more money in your home, that kind of thing. Um, I think that's a conversation you all have. It's a philosophical conversation and a theoretical conversation. If you get into the weeds of each other's business, and you don't need that, and I don't need this, man, that feels like a recipe for disaster yeah. for me. I'd rather see y'all pay each your business pay y'all salary. This is what we're going to take home, and then that's the money that y'all are budgeting together. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And that gives like um, and I, some pretty, you God. know, that's the good thing about numbers is like numbers are emotional. So, so knowing, okay, yes, that's the number we've set right. for a salary. Yeah. That's what's coming in. That's the boundary that's set. So then, if she goes into her business and does pay more for advertising, or right, or you go buy the new computer, that's within the business. That's kind of over that boundary. So having that hard number makes I think a lot of this so much easier. I would love to see y'all have a regular um I don't know the right way to I don't know what I would call this, but it's not a marriage retreat of some sort, but it's, it's almost a business mastermind group that y'all you all the only two members and or maybe you invite some other friends and you it's not for you to give advice, but it's for somebody to ask advice. Like you mentioned, I would love Winston's brain on some of these problems. But I know that if Winston came in and just started barking, you know what you should be doing? You can take that advice and walk out the door with it, right? (laughs) So wait to give advice until you're invited into that conversation um, but set up and set up some pretty clear boundaries. But, man, it'd be cool if you all talk to each other. is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. The Ram 
Ramsey Show. I'm Ramsey personality Rachel Cruz here with Dr. John Deloney answering your questions about life, money, relationships, anything. And driving. And try it. Tell it. Yes. Rachel, I crashed my wife's Prius today. We got, a, to we got a story. That was a scary. It, it is scary. And ha, ha, why did you crash, John? That's I was not being an attentive driver. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you crashed. I did. I was doing which is some, actually very scary. I was doing some breathing exercises, which is not wise to do. But yeah, it was not good, man. It was scary. And uh, looks like we're going to put the old Prius to bed. Dave's not going to be able to make fun of me anymore. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a new car. But we made it here okay. Do you think it'll be totaled? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're able to drive. No, no one got hurt. We'll nope, say that no out loud. No one got hurt. It was a single car. I, I just hit the that concrete divider. Just so scary. Yeah. It was pretty wild. Going no. too fast, not paying attention. Yeah. I, my wife, I'm, I've changed America. I'm changing my driving habits, effective immediately. <laughs> I'm gonna be a, uh, what do you call it, a uh, speed student. limit driver. Ah, oh, I was gonna say a student driver. Nope, you no. Need a chaperone in the I'm car. Not, <laughs> exactly. <Still. laughs> I'm gonna be a speed limit driver. I'm gonna drive a speed limit and just slow down my life a little bit. I, I was think scared. that's yeah. a great, a great plan. Well, everyone's so alive and well. If you ha- want driving advice, feel free to give us a shout. That would well. be great. If you're, yeah, driver's ed teacher, give us give us some laws. <laughs> if you're a driver's that. ed teacher, don't call the show. <laughs> uh, but for real, if you have a question, give us a call at 888 825 All right. Up next is Robert out of Phoenix. Hey, Robert, how can we help? Hey, Rachel. Hey, Dr. John. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Thanks so much. All right. So I have a question. Uh, I'm on baby step two right now, and... Just recently, I heard one of the podcasts where um, David said, you probably have too much car. And so the car is the last thing on my debt snowball. And I also owe more on it than it's worth. So my question is, should I just keep walking out the baby steps and pay off the car as I get there? Or should I try to save a little bit? Uh, like the negative equity that I have on the car, pay off the car and go get a little beater to finish walking out the step. Yeah, great question. How much do you owe on it? I owe about 16000 on it right now. About 16000 What's your household income? Um, I make about seventy grand a year. Okay. And what other debt do you have? That's it? Um, student loans, credit cards. Um, I owe a lot to AT&T because I bought a lot of devices because I was very materialistic at the time. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. We've all been there. Uh, okay. So what, how much does the rest, uh, does all that debt add up to? Cause you said it, the rest of it adds up to about 60,000, right? Now. 50 or 60, 60, 60, but they're all small debts because you said the car is the largest, correct? Right. I mean, student loan would probably be, um, my like second largest because yeah. I've got like two or three student loans and they're all like in the 12 or 13 range. Okay. So yep. you have a total of student loans of 30 or 40 grand, right? Somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I would still recommend though, Robert, still doing that debt snowball, um, method, even though, yeah, your student loans, they're, they're all separate, and even though they add up to more than your car, still keep those separate unless you want to consolidate those for a lower interest rate. You can do that. But but again, those quick wins, and it's kind of nice, I mean, a little bit that you do kind of have these small chunks because uh, it's going to help with the momentum and the feeling like you're that you're winning. Uh, you're going to get those quick wins, which is great. So the rule of thumb really with the car is I feel like if you can't pay it off within six months to a year, then you probably have too much car. And so you can wait until you get – to the point and take out a small loan for the difference and then go get a beater if you want to do that. Or if you get to the point that the 16000 is part of the debt snowball toward the end, um, that you get to there and say, okay, what do I want to do? You can make the decision then. Uh, but looking at this now, I mean, I don't think it's a make or break for me, honestly, yeah. Robert. I, so I'd probably, I'd probably keep the car and just tell you to get after it. Um, okay, yeah, because that's what I was thinking. Like, I wanted to think about getting a beat of I'm like, what about the maintenance? What about this? What about that? I don't, like, I don't care I about that because you're gonna you're gonna it. live you're gonna go gangbusters on this deal, and you're gonna be out of debt in two years anyway. And right. you're not gonna go to a restaurant. You're not gonna hang out. Everyone's gonna laugh at you, and you're gonna just smile the whole time, right? And you're gonna work two jobs and three jobs. So, the time on this deal and the maintenance on that, I, I don't I don't care about that. Um, I care more about. It's you, the math. Yeah, the, like if you said that I have a fifty thousand dollar car, right, right. we're gonna have a different conversation. Yeah. But the sixteen thousand, okay. yeah, to the point that you're gonna be able to pay that off in less than a year when you get to the, that part of your debt snowball. 
Um, I think, yeah. I What's think the car good. worth, man? Uh, it's worth about ten right now, so I have like a negative equity of about six thousand dollars on it. Yeah, because and then you'd go go take out a ten thousand. Yeah, you go take out a ten thousand dollar loan. Then. Yeah, yeah. Hope that helps, Robert. Thanks so much for calling. Cars, they're the thing. I know you're it's, either over. You got too much car. You're crashing them into things. I, it's, it's the <laughs> theme is what it feels like right now. But it is amazing, you know the. Obviously, everyone wants a safe car. Right. Having a nice car is great because you're in it a lot. But the utility of what a car does of yeah. getting you to point A to point B. I'll tell you what. Uh, we've lost our minds, I feel like. And, and we, we laugh about it here. And obviously, you know, I, I fall way over on this side of it. But the car I, cr- I crashed today was a 2010. And I had just put, in the, put a little bit of money in it because I wanted it to last me another 10 years. Yes. And... Because it's a, it's a fine car. It just gets me to and from, right? And right, I think right, when you dis- right. disassociate yourself from the identity, like, I'm the kind of guy that drives this kind of car, that's when you're just a recipe for disaster, right? Absolutely. And there is a real uh, sentiment about beaters and they're going to cost us a- They often don't. Right? Yes. If you take care of your car, they often don't. A great Honda, great we'll Toyota. Go for eternity, yeah. That's Forever. Right. Forever. All right, up next is Nick in Birmingham. Ham. Hey, Nick, how are you? Good, Rachel and John. How are you? Doing Good. great. How, are you? how can we help? Good. Um, I have a question. It's kind of both a spiritual and a financial question. And so a uh, quick breakdown of me. Um, I'm married with two kids. Uh, I have a two-year-old and a five-year-old. Um, I'm in baby steps four through six. Uh, so we've been attacking the house with gazelle intensity uh, and anticipate paying off the house within the next two years. Awesome. Um, but I believe, uh, absolutely. But I believe that I um, have a calling from God to expand our family through international adoption. Um, it's something that my wife and I just recently uh, started thinking. Um, we've always wanted to have four kids, um, but I was uh, baptized a few months ago, and it's been a crazy spiritual journey over the past few months. And um, and I think God has laid it on our hearts to uh, look into international adoption. So I guess my question, uh, the first thing is I know nothing about uh, the adoption process. And we've, we've talked to some people here and there over the past week or so, uh, but also financially, obviously it's not. Uh, the cheapest thing in the world. Um, So I guess given my situation, um, where I'm at in the baby steps, only having a house left to pay off, um, how do I kind of just approach that um, financially and and prepare for that, if that's something we ultimately want to pursue? Well, all great questions, Nick. And I think the the heart of adoption, I think, is one of the most beautiful things. for a family to do. And, um, yeah. So for you guys, I mean, you are, you're in a position to do it. I mean, you guys don't have, you don't have debt, you don't have payments. You're able to take your income if you guys wanted to, um, and put a lot towards it versus attacking the house with gazelle intensity. So you could even pull back from that some if you wanted to. Um, but I know that there's tons of, you know, agencies out there and people that really can walk beside you in this process because there's a lot of layers to this. And there's a, actually a great book called Adopt Without Debt by Julie Gum. And she walks through her entire story, how she did adoption completely debt-free. Um, and so that can just give you some ideas and a starting point uh, to be able to start this journey because it can be done debt-free. And um, and again, this book is it's a great resource. And I recommend everybody who's going on this sort of major life change journey, they feel like they have a calling, get a couple of people in your life who are down the road 10, 15 years who have been through the international adoption process, take them out to coffee, make them a regular part of your life and learn what's actually going on. Um, don't mistake a calling for being irresponsible.
If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. We have Shelby and probably one of the best names I've ever heard, Maximilian. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, from Detroit. Dude, my parents named me John and your parents named you Maximilian. Yeah, That's I can, incredible. I can thank my mom for that one. My well dad wanted to call me Teddy, so. Oh, Dude. Not even yeah. shortened to Max, like the full thing. Yep. It's yep. awesome. Okay, <laughs> well, love it. we're here to celebrate you guys because you've done what some would say is the impossible, but you are debt-free. Yeah. So yeah. tell us your story. When did this start? Um, it started about a month before we got married. My Aunt Sarah had mentioned this Dave Ramsey guy after I was complaining about how the numbers on my student loan payments weren't going down. And then we were doing premarital counseling. And I was talking to Pastor Daniel Wine, Williams Lake Church, um, about that. And he was like, well, you know, we got a guy here at the church who teaches the FPU classes. So we signed up and... And we just did it. And did it together before <laughs> yeah. you're married. So how much yeah. did you guys pay off? Just under $43,000. Awesome. Making oh. what kind of money? We made between 70 and 80 um, during the two years. That's awesome. And how long did it take you? Two years Those and two three years. months. Two yep. years and three months. Yes. What do y'all do for a living? Uh, I'm a freight broker. So A freight broker? Freight broker. Okay. Yeah. I thought you said something else. Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> and um, I work for the family business doing lawn care and some construction projects with oh, my yes. dad. Love That's it. Very awesome. Cool. Yeah, it's great. Okay. So two years ago, you guys are engaged. You got How long have you guys been married now at this point? Oh, uh, three, three years? Two, three three yeah. years. 2019, okay. we got married. We've been married. together okay. 10 years, though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It took it's all running minute. together. Maximilian, yeah. you should have that number in your back pocket <laughs> yeah. at all yeah. times. Yeah. 11, 11 coming up yeah. right now. So. Yep. So what was it for you guys that clicked? You guys went through Financial Peace University, and mm -hmm. what was about it that you thought, okay, we're going to change stuff. We're going to change the way we've been looking at money, handling money, and we're going to start paying off this debt? Yeah, I think... Um, for me, because the majority of the debt was my student loans, I just got mad at looking at the number and I wanted to do something about it. And, um, you know, it was great to have a husband who is so supportive and on board. He He's very willing to do almost like anything I ask of him. So I didn't really have to like persuade him into it. So that was nice. Just kind of here for um, the ride, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all, um, man? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, I don't know. I think I just got mad enough, and it just like the more I started learning about the Ramsey program, it just it made me even more mad. And we just originally we tried to we were thinking we'd do it in three years, and even when we made that goal, we were like, hmm, I don't I don't really know if we can do that. Yeah. Um, but we'll just uh, we'll just see how it goes. And then uh, as we started going and getting closer, it's like you learn how to cut out the little things. And that makes even more of a difference. And then we made our new goal to get debt free before our daughter's first birthday. And we wow. did that, beat that by like a week. So, so when you say uh, you were getting mad, we're getting mad at. So I was told by like friends and family, you know, like if you can put a, a, a extra money towards your, your payments, you'll be out of debt faster and blah, blah, blah. So I would put like 25, 50 bucks extra towards my payment. And after like a year of paying, I was like, I'm going to see what my total's at. And it had increased like from the original start of what I was paying. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. How is anybody supposed to get out of debt? This makes no sense. And, you know, when you go to college, they tell you you're going to get a job and yeah, don't worry about the student loans. You'll be able to pay those off real quick because you're going to have big girl job. And like, unless you're intentional and you make those big sacrifices, like the number doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yep. yeah, it's, it's and Maximilian, what was it like dating somebody that you've fallen in love with, you're ready to spend your life with her, and then she's like, by the way, I'm coming in with a cool 50 grand in debt. Yeah, you know, 
it's kind of accepted because we both went to the same college. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess you just kind of accept the debt like that's normal. Um, when she told me about this program, uh, I was, you know, like I said, in for the ride. Wasn't sure what it was going to bring. But I think with her type of personality, she's so, uh, you know, persistent and disciplined. Like, yeah. she's very headstrong. As soon as she wants to do something, she'll go out of full throttle. Yeah. And seeing these payments she's done by herself, I mean, I think I saw... It was seven payments just back to back. Even when it wasn't pay week, she was still putting money in. And I was like, okay, this is serious. Like she's she's putting some serious control on her debt and, and lowering it. And I, I think that's where I was like, okay, this is why I want to pitch in. I want to help out. I want to be a part of this. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. inspiring and motivating too. It's awesome. Cool. It's amazing when a married couple does that, right? You work yeah. together and it, it makes it go that much faster. I think that's, that's part of the magic of you guys paying it off a year earlier than you even yeah. were yep. expecting, which is amazing. Yeah. So who were your biggest cheerleaders during this time? We had a lot of supporters, but I'd say the biggest is probably um, my parents, Darren and Lisa, and then as well as my grandparents, um, Aunt Sarah and Uncle Rob, uh, our FPU coordinator, Bud, who came to support us today with yeah. his wife, Jane. Oh, awesome. Um, and a fun teaser for the next hour of the mm-hmm. show, though. There's another debt-free screen that you guys are aware of. Oh, yeah. And who is that? My beautiful parents Darren and Lisa they're going to be on and they've yeah. paid off their debt too it's yeah. like the family affair I love it yeah it's I great it. we're so excited to be able to do this uh together you know Max was easy to get on board but um my parents they were a little trickier but like you said <laughs> I'm persistent it. so I eventually got them on board I love so, it yeah. well you guys you've done a fabulous job so Thank how does you. it feel how does it feel it's crazy it's like you you kind of imagine what it's going to feel like, but it's better than what you think. And it, it's just crazy in a culture where, like, debt is so accepted. Like, once you're debt-free, you're like, that was so dumb. Like, never <laughs> yes. again. Yes. No. You know, we got friends getting houses with nothing down and brand new cars that they can't afford and all this stuff. And we're just like, oh, that's good. Yes. Congrats. But Absolutely. It, behind closed doors, we're like, never. Yeah. Not us. <laughs> I don't. No. Because you tasted no. the freedom. You know what yeah, it is. It, it is. It's freedom. And then it's, it's crazy, too, because you think when you're debt-free, like, oh, I have this much more money to spend but now it's like man we don't even really want to spend it we want to save it and yeah. you know now we have other goals so we, yeah. sweet we were, little avery yeah we were joking Nap about time. uh now that we finally paid it off it's like we want to go back into debt just to do it again joking. You know? <laughs> joking. It, it was once you build momentum and see that number yeah. grow oh it was it became a game it was just so fun. fun hey the game's yeah. fun when you flip it around and you yeah. start wealth building right yeah yeah, well, yep. yeah we're getting there yep. blast. and how about yeah. and giving it all away is fun too yep. yeah awesome. it is for That's sure awesome. congratulations i know you. absolutely do you do you want to grab avery or is she good right now yeah she'll probably stop crying when she sees me no that's perfect all right <gasps> come here babe so we got shelby okay. maximilian oh, and sweet avery who's about to be one two Two. Or about to be two. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. about yeah, to be yeah. two. Go and get and they've way, paid yeah. off almost close to $43,000, making seventy to 80000 in two years. Count it down. Let's hear your debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're debt-free! Debt free! <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. And we've got a copy for you guys, Baby Steps Millionaires. And the total money makeover to pass to friends. And of course, Baby Steps Millionaires is the next part of your journey. I love it. I love when the babes are in. The little <laughs> babies is my favorite. Is my favorite because, man, it's possible. I'm like, this couple that's been married three years, yep. sacrifice everything, put all their effort in, and now that little one's life is, is forever changed. Completely different. And... They've proven to themselves as a young married couple from two, uh, us two or old married couples now um, that not if, but when things show up in our lives, which they will, right? That's just part of doing life is doing hard stuff together. They know they can come together, develop a plan and that they're going to follow it. And man, Max, they don't make a lot of husbands like Max who looks at his wife and says, I'm going to walk lockstep with you. I'm not only going to walk in front of you and behind you, I'm going to walk next to you. We're going to do this thing together. Yeah. And that's, that's just incredible, man. What a gift. There is. There's such a, a power a power that happens in a couple's life when they do this, right? When you have anything in your life that you think, this is going to be hard. Yeah but we're doing it together. Yep. Like we want this instant gratification in life, right? We want that, but it's the journey that forms and molds you so much and walking through that together and choosing that sacrifice 
It does. I mean, it changes your marriage forever because like you said, you they can, can do, do anything. anything now. Absolutely. Anything. Absolutely. And all you guys listening, you can do this. You can do anything just as they've proven today. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I am Ramsey personality Rachel Cruz. Alongside me, Dr. John Deloney hosting today. So we're going to get to Scott in Indianapolis. Hey, Scott. Welcome to the show. Hey, Rachel. Hey, John. Um, John, sorry about your accident. It's, uh, hey, it's, it's like a bummer, but I'm glad you're okay. Thanks, man. It's my own dumb fault. It's what I get. <laughs> it's what I get. Well, probably, probably trying to wake you up for something, so pay attention. There you- <laughs> Thanks, man. My wife said um, the same thing, Scott. You're not helping. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I meant in the bigger scheme of things. Not she just, did, too. She did, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to get your attention, maybe. <laughs> so what's up, man? Well, um, I just really want to like express my gratitude for your ministry because uh, my wife and I are in a position where we really have uh, tremendous peace about where we are financially, and, and that's due a lot to, to your ministry. So thanks very much oh, for that. Awesome. Well, you guys did um, it. You guys did it. Well, we are in a position now where we're, we've got some financial stuff coming up, and I wondered about sort of a strategic shift. Um, we've been focused a lot on, like, college savings and um, and paying the house off and, you know, those types of things. But uh, we feel like we're really heavy in retirement, and we have, um, you know, two vehicles that are probably, like I call, in the zone, meaning – Anything could happen at any moment, you know, with uh, <laughs> with both cars. So, yes. um, but we're not ready to go out and buy a new one. But just to prepare for that, and also, um, my wife has a special needs brother. He's a, an adult that we would likely have to care for, and we just can't do that in the house that we're in now. So, um, just some things that might be on the horizon here, and I'm wondering if shifting away from retirement savings and some of the other type of thing might be um, uh, an option to prepare for those. Uh, potential expenses because um, we feel like we're really heavy in retirement. Um, Are you guys doing more than the fifteen percent? We have in the past. Uh, we're not right now. We're probably right there at at fifteen percent. Um, so my recommendation, Scott, would be that yeah, I mean the car situation, you know, is more obviously more urgent and going to be more recent than the house situation. So are you thinking with the home? Are you guys going to move homes completely? Or are you going to have to refurbish and redesign? Your current home. We are pretty tight here just with land and things like that. So we would, um, and we probably just, we have three little boys. So having that separate living space, like either, either a carriage house or like an apartment above a garage or something like that, that would yeah. let us have some independent space. Um, Absolutely. That still care for him. And he's high functioning and, and, and not, you know, and, and, a great guy just just had some um some disabilities yeah so. absolutely well it's very kind of you guys to um to step in there for him and his life so i love that so if i were you i would not go over i would not go under that 15 percent. i want to keep that steady because the thing with investing specifically is you know even if you guys paused it for four to five years like going backwards you can't refund your iras your 401ks these retirement funds in the past you just can't and so can being consistent in that at 15% um, is something that I would st- I would encourage you to still do. Uh, kids college, you guys could look at saying, hey, let's slow down on that just a little bit. Maybe maybe slow down on the house for just you know a few months and and to save up cash again for the cars is what I'm looking at first and foremost. Yeah. Um, and then how much is enough on college? Like, where where do you kind of say, hey, we've got that covered or? 
I would talk to a smart investor pro and they're okay. going to be able to kind of do the math, if, especially if you have little ones that, hey, in 18 years, here's what it's going to look like if it's invested in a mutual fund or whatever the 529s in or the ESA um, to be able to do that math. And the thing about college too, you know, I always say when you get to this point, this is a gift for your kids that you're able to help with college. Um, but also there's a lot of kids that go to college debt free that never had their parents help. Yeah. But uh, yeah. but and setting people up to do that is is a gift and taking care of your family in that way, I think is, is a great thing. I, I think it's important that you and your wife just... <laughs> The, the, the scenarios you laid out are rather amorphous. They are, are hey, we want to kind of stop doing this so we can kind of start yeah. doing that. I would get real specific, and you've heard me say this a thousand times. I know that sounds like a broken record, but this is one of those moments in your marriage. you got three young kids where you're going to clear the deck. And the challenge a lot of folks run into when you're in this situation is they want to keep living as things were, but y'all's life is different now. Right. And so yeah. let's have a half day retreat with just you and your wife. Let's go somewhere. Let's get out of town. Let's get somebody to watch the kids. And let's say, okay, where are we? We have three little ones. How old are they? Uh, six is our youngest. And we have an 11 year old and a 13 year old. So yeah. they're all boys. Yeah. You've got stinky, hairy boys now. You got a six year, you know what I mean? <laughs> like our life suddenly shifted and all of a sudden we blinked and we've got a teenager now and we've got a six year old yeah. who still doesn't know what day it is. And Let's get out and say, okay, here's our life. Here's how much money we have. Here's how much we've paid down our house. What would a house look like? Where do we want to move? What do we want to be doing? And let's get real specific about these goals that you want. And then, yeah, hang on to your retirement principle. I love that, Rachel, because that's the one that's going to hang on you. And then if you want to move, move. And if you want to pause on the on the student loans thing, I, I, I mean, with the st- paying for college. I've heard people say, I just want to have $50,000 a kid. I want to have $100,000 a kid because of my job and this, I'm going to be put $200,000 away for each kid. I think that's a very personal thing and never lose sight of what Rachel said. It's a gift. There's not a an ethical mandate or a spiritual mandate or a governmental mandate that you come up with 100% of wherever your kid wants to go to college, right? So what number can y'all afford right now? And you got a brother moving in with you. And y'all are of a great spirit and a great heart. And so I say that's a right now expense that y'all need to start preparing for because you know it's coming. So again, let's get real specific about what we're going to do and be real specific about what we're not going to do. And that clears a lot of this this ambiguity up, right? No, absolutely. That's I think that was what I was going to say next too, which is perfect. So I'm like, put numbers to it, there right? You when you're able to put numbers and to know an actual plan, um, we have a guy that we work with in marketing here at the office and he always says like, um, you know, you, you have to be able to just see it. Actually, you say this too, but, yeah. but the picture, picture, yes, yeah. but that thing. And, and so even just pulling up the picture, like literally finding something, say, okay, here's the kind of car we want. Here's an ideal house. What is this going to cost? I mean, all of that, giving any level of, of weight to these options um, in a sense of just reality, not that they're just kind of floating in your head and you think you might, I don't know. And go Kelly Blue Book your current car. See, okay, if they're about to if they're about to die out, maybe you sell them now, put any extra cash you guys have, and buy new ones in the next month or two. I don't know. So let's, let's talk about that real quick. Um, often couples, and we've said this before, you know, they we all do. We speak in words, but we think in pictures. And so you and your wife can be talking about, um, you know, we need to get new cars. Well, y- my mind flashed another 2010 Prius, your mind (laughs) flashed a Tesla, right? And so we're going to decide, like, we're going to go past each other with what we are looking for and what our dreams and goals are. We need to get a new house. She may be thinking a 4,500 square foot house and you're thinking a 2,800 square foot house. And so the difference there is $500,000, right? Right. And so let's get very specific. This house, this car, this time, this place. And then you can have some values conversations and some telling the truth conversations. And I don't need that. You don't need that. And then we can land on a path. And once you get that path, man, then it's, you're off to the races. That's what it is. Yeah. It, and so with this whole, I love that when you say this about, you know, we speak in words, we think, we think in pictures. Yeah. What can couples do out there that are like, man, I'm just missing my spouse and X, Y, and Z. It could be on anything, right? Whether it's um, goals or you're wanting to change career, anything. Like how can people put that into practice today? The key word there is practice and is to take the pressure off. We build up so much pressure on each other and we just miss each other. And then it's like we lost the Super Bowl. You didn't, man. You dropped a pass in practice. That's what we're practicing, right? And so instead of when you find yourself using that ambiguous language, like, I wish you just clean up around here. 
Be yeah, specific. Yeah. What does that mean? Because for me, that means I'm going to put my shoes away. For my wife, that means I want you to spray and wipe down all the counters and make sure all the stuff's in the dishwasher, right? And again, I would love to be able to, to honor her in that way and to take care of the house in that way and be a great partner in the house. I didn't even know that was a thing, right? Yes. Um, and I remember talking to my son once and he was six or seven and he was, we were in some, in a public space and he was saying something and I said, will you just be cool, man? And my wife said, what does that even mean? And I thought, <laughs> how do I... I got to paint a picture for my six-year-old. We need to do that with our spouses. We need to do that with yes, our friends. We need to yes. do that with our workplaces and be really clear. I love it. Love it. Well, thanks, America, for tuning in. And thanks to James and Jenna in the booth for helping us out this hour. This is The Ramsey Show. a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life, let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions in Nashville, Tennessee, this is the Ramsey Show where America hangs out to have a conversation about your relationships, your money, your life, just about everything. The advice is free and worth just about what you pay for it. Give us a shout, 888-825-5225. I'm John Deloney, joined here by the wonderful, best-selling author, brilliant Rachel Cruz, and we are taking your calls on just about everything. 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 How are you? Life. Doing great. Yeah. Doing great. How are and you? we have a big thing going on tonight. I know. Yeah, if you're listening live tonight, it's going to be a fun night. Yes. Yeah, so marriages all across the country, we know this. Hey, Lockdown's over. Oh, uh, lockdown's back. And then it's like, oh, okay, finally, lockdown's over. School's back. Uh, then it's back. Marriages across the country could use a date night right now. We are on the eve of the eve of the eve of Valentine's Day, an evening to come together and focus on what matters most, connection and communication. Some of the challenges of the last few years have pulled you closer together, maybe apart, whatever it is. We can help you come together tonight at a special Valentine's edition of Money and Marriage with me and Rachel Cruz streaming directly into your home at 7 p.m. We're going to walk you through life. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk about sex. We're going to talk about intimacy. We're going to talk about money. We're going to talk about fears. We're going to talk about everything. Goals. Goals. All the things. Yep. It, when it comes pet to marriage. peeves, right? So everything, go to RamseySolutions.com slash events to get your ticket. They're 30 bucks. It's the cheapest ticket date night you can have and will help your marriage and relationships get better. Speaking of pet peeves, give me one. What is your biggest pet peeve about your I husband? I know about Winston. And I love your husband. He's so great. I know. <laughs> I can't imagine he has any. Winston, I'll say this. I don't know if it's him or if it's me. I'm a little bit laid back. I'm just laid back. I don't have many things that I'm like, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. But he does a protein shake every morning. Uh oh. And he leaves it just on the counter. Does and I just you? see it. And I just see it. I'm like, we can we can just do two more steps <laughs> into. But here's the problem. If you go on my nightstand, I have like eighteen cups of coffee yep. sitting there too. So I'm oh, That's my thing. thing, is cups everywhere. My oh, I, know, I leave I, them at, I have a thing about using an old cup. Or I just forget. Yes. I was. We have a gym downstairs in our house, and I just, I don't know, it's like these moments your eyes open, you're, and I just think, why why are there 11 cups down here? <laughs> no, I texted him for the show. I was like, hey, if we're going to talk pet peeves, what's my what's your base pet peeve about me? He said granola bars in the cup holders. <laughs> Cause Number I, one. Because I always eat granola bars in the car, and I always just. Put it in the cup holder. He took right a dive there. on that one. He's got some way worse ones. Oh, I'm sure. He's but helping I'm, you out. I'm, me- but I'm like, I'm the messier one, I would say. Ah. Like, I can have stuff places and it doesn't like bother me. I mean, it's like for him. And I'll say the way you just said, thing. I'm totally laid back. I just don't know why he can't take two extra steps to put <laughs> the protein thing. My guess is you're super laid back, super laid back, super laid back until you're not. And until I bet I'm it's like, incredible. What? <laughs> I know. It's tough. Okay. What's, what's Sheila's for you, you think? I mean, she doesn't. I'm, I mean, I'm. 
I don't, have, I don't want to say I'm perfect, but I'm pretty close. Super pretty close, close to perfection. The Man, her laundry list is pretty long. <laughs> I'm late to everything. That's a huge pet peeve. Um, I, th- I think the room is close enough. And she thinks things should go where they belong or in the hamper or things like that. I think the room is fine. Um, And, you know, I saw that speech that that guy gave about making your bed in the morning for the first win of the day or whatever. I think that's great. And I love that idea. Man. Never. I never. We never make our beds. Really? Never. It will change your life. It it makes everything better. I don't believe because my life's pretty great right now. When no, I'm in my bed, you don't. Yeah, so you're only you don't know the other side of the, the of the equation here, the other variable. You should try it just as a n equals one experiment. Your life will be better. But here's the thing: if you don't do it, and your spouse does, Winston does. Sheila looks at me with this just shame and disdain, <laughs> kind of like you're talking about. Like it's not. I mean, it's like four pieces of cloth. You can just pull them tight, and the whole thing's over. And you can't do that. And so then I feel small and sad. So anyway, um, and yes, I leave my protein shakes all over the place too. All of it. I know yeah. it happens. But hey, it's marriage, right? It's marriage. And y'all are what? Twenty years? <laughs> That's how you say. Yeah, it's just, yeah, we'll celebrate twenty years this year. Twenty years. When's it? What month? Anniversary? July. Oh, great month. Yeah, it's it, good. I agree. It's a great month. Great month. Is that y'all's too? No. December, opposite month. It's a terrible month. <laughs> All right, let's go to John in Manhattan. What's up, John? Y'all been having a boring year. Well, What's up? John, I want to know what hey, you're... Hey, so are, you, are you married, it's John? Hey, hey, John, married. are you married? Uh, very much so. Nice five years. Okay. What's the bi- what's your biggest pet peeve about your wife? Uh, my, I was hoping you'd ask me that. Uh, the biggest pet peeve is that she's just always right. Oh! Nine times out of ten, nine times out of a hundred. <laughs> She's already got the answer. Like, well thought out before I even come to the conclusion. Hey, John, is she standing right behind you with the weapon point? Like, no, if you John. need help, brother, I'll call. No, no. <laughs> Are you in danger, John? Are you in danger, John? Right <laughs> All right, hey, what's up, man? How can we help? All right, so my wife and I have a very unique uh, situation here. So we're 33, 32 years old. We are on the last baby step, as far as I know. We have a mortgage, 300000 550 is the value of the house. She's in school right now for a nurse practitioner. And for the last two years, we've cash flowed her college. Awesome. Now, we had twins unexpectedly um, three months ago. But, yep, yep. Nice, very nice surprise. <laughs> um, the house that we bought, though, is a starter house. You know, it's a three-bedroom, two-bath. It's a ranch, 1,500 square feet. You know, there's only so much space you have here. And we also have a toddler who's three years old. So working from home remotely, COVID, you know, you're getting on top of each other. And we need to expand now. We need to sort of uh, flap our wings, I guess, get get more room. But the housing market over here is just insane. You know, you look for something that's like a four-bedroom, five-bedroom, you're talking about maybe 800000 And I have a 15-year currently, and it's within 25%, so on and so forth. So we're stuck between like a rock and a hard place. Mm. What do we do? Do we buy a house, right, that needs to be fixed up because everything on the market, as far as we see, is, uh, you know, needs a gut job, is what we can call it. Or... Do we expand? And if we do expand, and we like our location, we like where we are, how do we pay for it? Do we, do we you know, take out equity out of the house? Do we try to cash flow or something like that? So we just need a little bit of direction uh, as far as what to do in terms of, I guess, living situation here. Yeah, it's tough. And I feel like in, in really high real estate markets, parts of the country, whether it's California, Florida, Manhattan, New York, you know, all Nashville, of that, it, yeah. it yeah, we're not compared to those places. I yeah. feel like there's like the like it's just the insane, and we always kind of laugh because we're like, but you're not excluded from math, right? That's like just because right. you live yeah. in Manhattan, like the math still it's still a thing. So, so, so just on that side of the equation, John, I mean, looking to see, okay, what can you afford? Like, are you guys? Would you guys be able to still be within that? 15 year fixed rate, 25% by moving out even maybe a little bit further since you guys are working from home. Is there any part of you that says, okay, let's go out 30 more minutes, um, you know, to, to get out of Manhattan proper, if there's any way to, to be able to expand and go well, out a little bit further? Technically speaking, I'm in, I'm in the burbs. Okay. So, you know, I have a, like an hour and a half, give or take commute. So I, I'm with you, Rachel. I, here's the hard thing, John, is the the math works and this is where these are hard conversations but is this the place we're going to live and if this is the place we're going to live this is the place we can afford in this place and i'm going to make peace with that place if you're already in an hour and a half commute every day brother and you're already in the burbs and y'all are coming in and out 
And I think it's a hard conversation about what would life look somewhere else if we want to expand the If house. we want to expand or stay where you are or cash flow the, ex- the expansion. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000. All thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. This is the Ramsey Show. Give us a shout. 888-825-5225. I'm John Deloney, joined here by Rachel Cruz, and we're taking your calls on just about everything. Money, life, retirement, marriage, all of it. Let's go out to Gabriel in Columbus, Ohio. What's up, Gabriel? Hi, Rachel. Hi, uh, Dr. John. Thank you for taking my call. You got it. What's up, man? Are you married, Gabriel? I'm going to jump in and ask. No, 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 I'm not. Are Are you dating anybody? Uh, I am dating. Yes. Oh. Okay. All right. what, we need a pet peeve. <laughs> What's your pet peeve? Um, I think I think when she comes over, she like closes to, closes the cabinets and the drawers really hard. That I find like the silverware kind of tray kind of pushed all the way back, and so <laughs> I think that. <laughs> Gabe, she's got some rage. She's, some aggression. <laughs> some aggression of opening the drawers. <laughs> that would yeah. be me. <laughs> she's got some rage. Yeah, that's Rachel. She's like, no, everything's fine. Um, and, <laughs> no, but I'm aggressive when I like put things away, so I can see like things are being flung around okay i love it love what, it gabriel. what would she say her pet peeve is about you gabriel um i think i i tend to leave my clothes all over the place too um so i think maybe that it's disgusting and ridiculous gabriel just kidding i do, <laughs> I do the same thing i do the same thing all right brother so what's up how can we help so i actually i actually have a relationship question um and so i'll ask my question then maybe i could you know you guys can ask me um additional stuff but uh so i'm struggling with like trying to figure out if if she's willing to get as serious as I, I I am to get out of debt. And so I want to know kind of, kind of like how do I navigate this so that the relationship, you know, if the relationship takes a step, a step forward, we are a couple that are on the same page about money and or could this be like a red flag into like future money marriage issues? Hmm. How long have you all been dating? Um, three and a half years. So you know her pretty well. Why won't she get a, Why doesn't she have any interest in paying off her debt? Um, I mean, when we talk about money, you know, I bring up my intentionality and I, I recently signed up for FBU, so I'm starting to do that. But uh, when I talk to her about, you know, like the steps and stuff like that, she doesn't seem interested. Um, she does say, yeah, I obviously don't want my student loans, you know, hanging around me forever. Uh, but she also like has a savings that she kind of um, fears of draining uh, down to kind of pay her student loan debts. And she recently got a new car that was signed by her dad. Aww. So I kind of feel like I don't want to bring all that on if um, she's not willing to be on the same page. Almost all of the time, getting on the same page about a thing with your romantic partner, with your girlfriend, your spouse, whatever, is not about the thing. It's about uh, communication. It is about us painting a vision for one another, and we are leaning into this. So to answer your original question, um, this is rarely a money issue. It's usually a vision issue. Um, What I've seen in a couple years, Rachel, you've been doing this way longer than me. What I see is often, and again, I'm going to unnecessarily gender this, but guys get a hold of this plan, and they go at their wives or girlfriends, and they give them a bunch of tactics. Here's what you need to be doing. This and this and this and this and this. I mean, the natural response to that is, no, I'm not doing that. It's different when you sit down and say, 
I am scared and I feel out of control that I owe this much money. And for our future, what I would love for us to be able to do is to sleep at night. I'd love us to be able to focus on building wealth and changing our family tree and providing our kids a home where they are safe financially, where they don't have to worry about college, where we're not going to have to worry about shoes and food. It, you see what I'm doing? I'm painting a picture and a vision. And if you can get your partner to join that vision with you, then you reverse engineer that vision and say, okay, what are the steps it's going to take to get here? And what you've got that um, millions and millions of other people have had is you're taking FPU. Now you've got a plan that works 100% of the time. And I, but I have to get you a part of that vision. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, it does make sense. And I would say too, Gabriel, she's never, um, from what it sounds like, she doesn't have urgency in it because she doesn't have urgency. I mean, her dad signed a a note with her. Um, She has student loans that everyone else has and it's fine. So there's a, there's a level that she has to come to, to say, she doesn't want it for herself. Like she has to be able to say, I don't want this. I don't want to live like this. Um, because it, I mean, there's a, a truth that, right, that she could sacrifice for you and say, I will do this for you and all of that. But it's something about getting her on board to that vision that John's talking about that's, that's really crucial. And so I think asking her questions of, hey, what do you want life to look like? Or, hey, if we're on opposite pages, is that okay with you? Like, I wonder where she's standing with all of this. Because honestly, as uncomfortable as she's making you, you may make her that uncomfortable with being, you know, down this plan that is weird and saying, I do want to live debt free. So, um, so it starts kind of as a money thing, but like John said, it, it ends up being about other parts of the relationship. And what happens is when you get married, that stuff just magnifies, like it Big just becomes right. bigger. Right. And so, mm-hmm. so yeah, I mean, I do think it, I think there's an initial red flag for sure that you guys just aren't on the same page with it. And especially if there's a big goal that you want to have, um, and not just to have that goal for having a goal sake, but because of what it brings you. And that's kind of what John was saying too, right? It's bringing you this peace. It's bringing you this level of control that you want. And if she can't get on board with that, then it's going to be hard to, I think even on those issues of control and peace with parenting kids in the future, right? You could plug in other issues in marriage in that same bucket. So can I, can I ask you this, Gabriel? Um, how old, how old are y'all? I'm 27. She's 25. Okay. Um, She's still turning to dad for financial support at 25. Is that, is that a red flag in in your heart and mind? I I think it is. Um, I, I, I was trying to convince her to look at into used cars. I would kept showing her listings. So, you know, I didn't know how, how far I could push against her dad's uh, sort of plan or wish to, to sign a car for her. Hmm. So that was, that was a pretty big flag for me. Why three and a half years? I think, um, and I think this is something that I, I, for the first maybe one or two years, we've just haven't really talked about a lot about money until I started getting serious about paying down my loans. And so I feel like I slowly started bringing that up. Um, and I'm constantly talking to, to her about like, oh, I made a payment to, towards my loan. Okay, real, why aren't y'all married? Why aren't you married, brother? I think I think this is something that, I was scared to bring up. Okay. And so I think there is a fear of like, well, I don't want to, you know, get married and then um, come to realize that we don't have money issues, but a, a marriage issue. Yeah. Yes. And so let me let this, that's the biggest red flag of them all is I, I have a, I have a fear in my heart. I've got a secret. I've got, I'm scared of something and I'm not, I don't feel safe enough to tell you whether it's because I don't have the strength or because I'm fearful of the response. That to me is the biggest red flag. If you are going to join the rest of your life with somebody else, if you're going to make other humans with somebody else, at minimum, you've got to be able to have hard conversations together in a respectful, dignified, loving way. And that's where I would start here. And so this whole thing, Gabriel, starts with you and a pad and a piece of paper, writing down what are the things that concern you about this woman that you've been dating for three and a half years you know her now something is telling you uh, i'm still hesitant what is it write Mm -hmm. those things down and then have a hard but life-giving truthful conversation with her about this stuff and then let's again let's go about joining vision 
Yeah, and and obviously we want the best for you, Gabriel, and we want well. I would love for this relationship to work, yes. right? Like you want it to, um, but I think John's exactly right. Like this, I think this is one of the issues is that you get into this lifelong commitment and don't really even know what you're signing up for. And I think there's a, I, I, I think there's a element of that that is true no matter what. I no think you can do what. as much premarital account. I think you can do whatever you can to prepare, and nothing prepares you for marriage the marriage. Right. But the hesitancy that. Yes, that's going on in your voice right now, Gabriel, and the kind of that back and forth. Press into that. Here, here, Press into here's that. what you, you can never prepare for the issues, but you can practice the hard conversations, yep. right? So if you can have this little one, the way you drive when we're dating makes me uncomfortable and it scares me. Will you please slow down when I'm in the car? That may have been a conversation we had when I was dating Sheila. My response was, absolutely. I don't ever want to scare you. Yeah. And for her, she said, okay, that's a guy that I can feel safe with telling my needs to. And I was able to say, that's somebody that I value who will tell me who's struggling. Right? You're going to practice that. On the Ramsey Show and on the debt-free stage, we have Lisa and Darren from Detroit, Michigan. And I'm guessing that means you're here to do your debt-free scream. Yes, sir. Yep, Congratulations. Yep. Hey, Congrats. before we get there, going along with the money and marriage theme, quickly, what is a pet peeve you have of each other? Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> All of them? Not enough time. Just on the one. Show. I think through the debt-free journey, they're gone. Dude, you are the wisest wow. man I've ever seen. She was going to say his she, demand of coffee every morning. Yes. <laughs> <She's okay. laughs> hey, that's, brother, you're going to come in here and do the, the marriage the next half hour. You're genius. That's incredible. Fantastic. All right, Fantastic. so Lisa and Darren, how much did you pay off? $147,000. Two. Just under $142,000. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my gosh. How long did that take you? 20 months. 20 months. Wow. How much are you making? Between like 120. Yeah, 120 25. to 150. And then I run a business that we do a for profit business, it makes a little bit of money. Awesome. That we wow. don't. What do you guys do for a living? Um, I'm an educator, I'm a teacher. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, so I'm self employed. I do landscaping and stuff during the summer, hmm. cut grass, and construction during the winter. That's Man. So y'all did this in less than two years. So you guys were living on half. Half of what you were making, basically, and throwing everything else at the debt. Yeah. Yep. It was a shock. We could even do that. Yeah. Absolutely yep. incredible. Okay. So what, what made this happen, you guys? I mean, 20 months ago, what happened? Um, uh, our daughter yeah. got married. That was on the last hour. Um, we encouraged them to do marriage counseling. And through the marriage counseling, got us, their, their pastor made them do the... Uh, Financial Peace University. Yep. yep. And uh, then they got us in and... It wasn't really easy to get us in. I know. Well, I want to know that story. No, yeah, it was okay. Come on. <laughs> I mean, it's but sh- it, so for those of y'all, a little inside baseball. Your daughter and your son-in-law did their debt-free scream in the first hour. Correct. Correct. And they mentioned that they dragged y'all kicking and screaming. It is hard for parents to listen to their kids stick wisdom for their kids and we all know my kids are six and 12 and they get to tell dad you're not gonna believe us you should do this you should and i'm like all right that's enough of you right yep how in the world did y'all make that turn because that's hard it was it was kind of a roller coaster so in the beginning darren is very supportive of everything that our daughter and our, our son do um shelby was going to the classes and uh she was trying to encourage us to join and at first darren was like i know everything 
you need to know about money. Like, I, I don't need this. <laughs> and so he started to go to be supportive. And I, I like had these excuses to not go to the classes in the beginning. Um, I'm teaching, you know, you work longer hours and I've got report cards to do, like, you know, every excuse under the sun. And I was more really scared to go because I knew of our debt or my debt with student loans. Wow. And then he was going and then all of a sudden he drank the Kool-Aid, you know, Dave <laughs> has a way of saucing it up and he, um, he really wanted to go and, you know, he was as kind and gentle as he could be just, you know, saying this is something that we can do together and you might not think that I don't know how much the debt is, but I do know. How and much, I, what, what kind of debt was this? Um, most of it was student loans. Wow. So I mean, 142 it, was mostly student loans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. More than half of it. Graduate yeah. school too? Uh, yeah. Two master's degrees. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so you guys hadn't really talked about money. No. A ton. For, we've been married 30 years this August. Okay. Yeah. So we, we did. I mean, you y'all, know, y'all first are we were just the nodding and grunting yeah. phase. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, kind of. It, we never shared accounts before this. We never did. Right. Oh. We didn't do. Right. Wow money together yeah yeah and everything was separate even tithing was separate um Um, you know he was he was considered the one that like he took care of like the big major expenses you know car for the kids or if we were going on a vacation or trip and and it was probably halfway through the journey before our teacher bud that came with us um he just kept encouraging me you you gotta do things together and Mm. and until you Mm. we've accomplished more in the last two years than we did in the previous 30 years. That's wow. incredible. Marriage wow. together. That's incredible. Wow. And so you said, you said, um, and I know some tongue in cheek, but you're being serious that these little petty things, man, y'all lined up over the last few years and worked together. And a lot of that petty, pet peeve kind of nonsense is out the window. Tell me about that yeah. journey together with your marriage. Oh my gosh. I think the, the stress of finances and that, you know, you always hear that, you know, money is like a, uh, a what, one of the root causes one, for divorce yeah. and things like that. And you don't want to really accept that. But then as you start paying things off, you can let go. Mm-hmm. You're not as stressed and you don't have that anxiety over the finances. And then it brings up other things that you probably need to work on or you didn't recognize in your marriage. So even 30 years in, you know, those little pet peevey kind of things or um, the lack of communication, um, you know, starts to starts to make itself present and then you just kind of work those through those things so the combining the accounts for me always is just a struggle it, and it's 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 just a symbol of hey of yeah. unity right and and, and logistically all that it, it made everything better so that's once what i want to know was it hard for you guys because after 28 years at that point yeah. in marriage you you would live separately with accounts so when you combine them was that difficult or were you guys at a place that you were so on board because there's people listening right now well if you've seen our poster we did it her daughter oh, made us a poster the poster is ripped to shreds because um halfway through the journey you know you see, see all that it's just now I did rip it so that you didn't rip up the the graph because I was afraid of ripping up the coloring in because we worked really hard in that but yeah that was that was like a a frustration part way through but yeah and and the thing I, I guess really the important thing is is our life and our friendship and everything could have been so much better so so much before I was willing to share everything with my wife Except for my money, mm-hmm. and it, it's, it's, you know, it's just, I'm embarrassed about it and ashamed of it now, but. But, here's the thing. <laughs> but it's, it's better now. It's, That's it's right. awesome. That's right. And often shame curls us up in a ball and we don't do anything. And the one powerful move you made was to take that one step. And you Amen. listened to your baby little girl. And then you took another one, and then you took another one. And you were brave, right? And you were strong. And Man, I think what you've done, I mean, it's generational. Look, I mean, you've got a a grandkid over here that's not going to ever know these struggles because of the work you did, my man. So none of the last 28 years are wasted. It's incredible. Incredible, you two. Who's your biggest cheerleaders? Oh, my gosh. Definitely Max and Shelby. Yeah. 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 And it's Max, not Maximilian. But now he's going to have to go by Maximilian now. Oh, he gave us the full name last hour. Yeah. Um, No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Yeah, they were probably our biggest cheerleaders. Like, we would have these funny competitions of, you know, well, what are you selling? What are you putting up for sale? What are you getting rid of? I'm getting rid of the dog. Like, what are you, you know, just like little things like that. So there was a lot of, a lot of cheerleading going on. How does it feel? Oh, my gosh. I could, I could sleep. Yeah. Yep. I could actually sleep at night, which you didn't even, we were talking about that on the way here that I'm like, you know, I just realized that once it was paid off, like I could actually sleep at night. Like I wasn't, 
You know, Your body's not going from, to war every of, day. Well, aside yeah. from, you know, hot flashes, but that's a different topic. <laughs> but besides that, like, I wasn't, like, waking up thinking about that paycheck to paycheck or, okay, well, I know he's going to pay for this. And, you know, and so what if he goes out and he buys himself another toy? It's not my money. So, I, what, how, you know, I have no say over what he's spending the money on. And, you know, it's none of my business what he's doing. And he didn't tell me what to do. But, you know, here I am, you know, right now, mm. you know, bills and paying them and just doing the you know, trying to be the quote unquote submissive wife, which was, you know, and now you're, and now you're safe and yeah. connected yeah. and your body can finally sleep. Amen. Totally can relax. Finally Amen. Incredible. Totally yes. $142,000 <gasps> in 20 months paid off making 120 to about 150 grand working a couple of jobs, a teacher, construction, mowing lawns. Lisa and Darren from Detroit, Michigan. Let's hear your debt free scream. Count it down. Three, Three, two, two one. We're, We're debt free. Yes. yes. Oh. So great. Man. And brother, we're going to give you a copy of Total Money Makeover so you can find somebody in your community that you know that would, man, this is going to jumpstart their journey. And we're going to give you a copy of Baby Steps Millionaire because now you two are together and there is <sighs> no stopping Lisa and Darren. Y'all, that's life change right there. Not just money change, life and marriage. I don't Completely care how changed. long you've been married. Every day is a day to start over and say, today's going to be different. I'm talking to you. Yes, to you. Today can be different. Start now. Eight eight two five five two two five. This is the Ramsey Show. I'm John Deloney, joined here by Rachel Cruz, and we're taking your calls on money, retirement, life, anything and everything. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. Let's go to Tracy in Montgomery, Alabama. Hey, Tracy, what's going on? Good afternoon. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. What can we do? Um, my question is: is I'm kind of in baby steps too right now. Um, as far as getting my debt paid off, and I should have it paid off, hopefully, by everything but uh, one payment will be paid off by this time next year, and it'll still probably take me another year to pay off the loan um, on a horse trailer, because <laughs> I live in rural Alabama, but what it is, um, I'm 50, and I'm looking at after this debt is paid off, how to better invest um, as far as like a Roth IRA or mutual funds. I've got my 401k right now with work and I'm only investing at 5% and I have a stock purchase program with my company and I'm doing 2% of it right now. And I want to be able to invest more, you know, after my debt is paid off. I don't have a mortgage. I actually... Uh, my mother-in-law put my name on the deed for the property, and so I could pick up the. She didn't want to do the homeowner's insurance on the house. So t tell me, <laughs> so, tell me about your debts here. Um, you said you're you're about a year away. What kind of debt do you got? How much you got? It's I got uh, one more truck payment left, and my truck is used, and it, I just, don't plan on getting rid of it. Just tell me the numbers, yeah. Um, I've got about fourteen thousand with credit card, and then I've got twenty four thousand on the horse trailer. <laughs> and what is this? Okay, twenty four. What yeah. do you make a year? I make forty. Forty. And the horse yeah. trailer is that for <laughs> um, for your job? Is that what? Tell me a little bit about that. It's that's my a hobby. My my kids, as I guess I call them, because I don't have any children, and my fiance, pretty much husband, um, 
this was his mother's and father's place, and we got 60 acres. So okay, I, and it's paid for. <laughs> so the the place, great, good for y'all. Um, yes, I I want to make real clear that place is not. You have no claim, no moment, no not a second, not a penny towards that place until y'all are married. And so, um, well, actually, in Alabama, cause she put my name on the deed. She passed away in November. And so. she put your name on the deed too. Yeah. I'm the only one that was on the deed other than her. So so her um, blood was yeah. not on the she deed. She didn't put her yeah. son on it, but she put you on it? Mm-hmm. That's not messy at all. Yes. So my recommendation, well, no, honestly. Everybody's, everybody's good with it, so it's it's, it's all mutual. <laughs> believe it or not, hey, no, no, it's I, not I believe in a it. Jerry Springer moment. No, no, no. It's, it's um, our show, like the work that I've done for years, the work Rachel's done for years, the work Dave's done for years – is that everybody's got a great idea until the wheels fall off. And what we deal with all day is when people are saying, "Uh uh-oh, right? But here, that's a whole other call, whole other show. Um, I'm going (laughs) to, Rachel, I'll let you hop in here. I'm going to recommend sell the horse trailer. I know that's not cool and that's going to make you sad and I'm not doing that. And I know here's the thing. I know you're not going to, but I think you should sell the horse trailer and start from there. Well, Tracy, so here's the deal. You're 50 years old, right? So, you, you know, when you're looking at retirement here in the next 15 years, um, there has to be some some decisions that you make to up this. Do you have anything in retirement? I know you have a 401k at work. How much is in that? Uh, right now, there's about 60000 in it. And um, I'm really not sure on my, I mean, with, the way the market's been in my okay. company, it's my the stock purchase program I have has just been really like up and down. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Well, you're the which is great that you have sixty thousand in there. So, what yeah. I want to do is I want you to actually pause everything else. You said you were doing two percent in the stock option of the company. You're doing a little bit in the four hundred one k. As of now, I want yep. you to pause your 401k because to be able to get out of this debt, the fastest way possible is to get as much cash back in your paycheck to throw at this debt. And so by doing this and by being able to throw off you know, some more money into this credit card debt, it's going to get you, it's mm-hmm. going to get you moving. So I would, I mean, I'm kind of on, I'm on John's team on this one, um, Tracy, that's hard, but something like a horse trailer. And if you were making you know, 140 a year, this is a different conversation. You're making $40,000 a year right. with a two hundred with a $24,000 thing with wheels. And whenever we say a thing with wheels, I don't care if that's an RV, I don't care if that's a trailer, I don't care if that's a car, but you don't want half of your annual income to be in what we call four sets of wheels. It's so, a depreciating asset, yeah. So by removing yeah. that and by throwing as much money at this credit card that you could be out of debt in nine months. If you, if you paused paused the retirement, sold the horse trailer, got out of that debt, threw more money at this 14,000 credit card debt, you could be debt free. And then we can fast forward to say, okay, from there, building up an emergency fund, going back to your retirement. So you're only pausing for a year in this plan uh, and then throwing as much money as possible at the retirement. But I also, Tracy, would tell you to go talk to a smart investor pro. They are a trusted group of people here at Ramsey Solutions that we recommend in all over America, but for them to sit down with you and do the math, because I don't want you um, here in the next 10 years to not be funding as much as you should be. So there may be more money you want to throw at retirement after you're out of debt and you have that emergency Yeah, and I'd go one step further and I'd even sit, I would get the number today. And if not today, Monday, um, I would get the number that, how, how much those stock options are worth. And I would consider selling single stock and paying your debt off. Um, and I know you'd think, no, my company, they're doing great. My mom had worked at Enron and it went away, right? And so we always want folks to be careful about dumping a bunch of money into single stock yep. purchases into their own company. This might be, you may have won the lottery when it comes to luck and you're sitting on enough stock to get you completely completely out of debt and then you roll the rest of that over into your 401 and now you're off to the races you go buy yourself a Roth IRA and max it out and then you're off to the races there all right let's take one more quick call let's go to Allison in New Orleans hey Allison we're up against the clock so uh get right to your question hi John hi Rachel how's it going I'm doing well thank you and yourself good 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 all right we're up against the clock so let's get right to your question okay sure can you hear me okay yes ma'am 
Okay, great. Um, last year, both of my parents passed away, and we're right in the middle of I'm having so to sell the house at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been following Dave for about five years or so. I have a fully funded emergency fund. I have about um, $50,000 that I could possibly use um, in an account that's going to be available pretty soon in order to buy something. And my basic question right now is um, how to go from one house to the other. So should I wait until the house is sold? I can actually borrow 40000 from my um, emergency fund and put that with the 50000 that I'm going to have and then pay off. If I have a mortgage, I could pay it off with the money that I get from the house after we sell it. Or I can, um, I actually saved up about $11,000 um, to go and rent something if I needed to, um, which would I know me moving twice, but I'm trying to do this the cheapest way and the most um, efficient way yeah. financially. So, Allison, yes, so, yes, yes. so your parents passed away and you were living in their house. So now the house has to be sold. Is any is any of the equity going to be split between kids? Like once the house sells, are there other people yeah. that are going to be getting part of this? Okay. So what yeah. for, if the house sold at market today, do you know how much money you would be receiving for just your end? Um, I'm guessing um, somewhere upward, either 125 or higher. Okay. I would wait till the house sells uh, at this point, I'd and then li- when I'd it sells, I'd, yeah. move out and I'd then move twice and give yourself a little bit of space. Put down a down payment of 10 to 20 percent with some of this cash. And you have you're in a great position, Allison. You just yeah. throw out a bunch of numbers of cash you have set aside. It's great. I would rent and move twice. I don't know that's a pain. It may not be the cheapest option, but it's going to be the most peaceful option. And right now, your heart needs some peace. Like thing James and Kelly and the gang and you, America, will be back soon on The Ramsey Show. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. You can listen to all our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. Browse by topic or even sync clips to your friends. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions in Nashville, Tennessee, this is the Ramsey Show where America hangs out to have a conversation about your money, your life, your marriage, everything. 888-825-5225. I'm John Deloney, joined here by best-selling author and my brilliant friend, Rachel Cruz, and we're taking your calls on everything. And Rachel, we got a big event tonight, Money and Marriage, Valentine's Day edition. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna save some marriages. We're <laughs> Let's hope so, John. Let's, Let's hope so. <laughs> no, these this event always is fun. This is our fourth time doing it together. And, you know, it's two subjects that I think have a lot of tension points, a lot of things to celebrate, and it's just two big issues to say, hey, let's come together in one night, talk about it, and and really walk people through. I think there's, you know, it's obviously, it's fun and aspirational, but we'll give you some instruction on things like, hey, start doing this tonight. Here's like some small things you can start to change in your marriage, some small things you can start to change about your money that really will lead to big results in your life. And that's what, that's what we want for you guys. We don't want you to live in uh, a place where you don't have peace and we want to be able to help you say hey here are some of the best practices in these two areas yeah and so man we're going to be talking about sex we're going to be talking about money we're going to be talking about fear we're going to be talking about goals like how to get on the same page together we're going to be talking about all of it right so we'd love to have you join us if you're a ramsey plus member it's free it's free Go into your Ramsey Plus and log in, and it will be yours to stream. If you want to buy tickets, they're 30 bucks, not a piece, but for both of you, right? Uh, go, to Ra- uh, money, uh, go to RamseySolutions.com slash events and pick up your tickets. We will look forward to seeing you there. It's going to be a blast. Um, and in the last yeah. hour, we talked about pet peeves of uh, spouses. Of spouses. Yes. Which is great. And I want to find wanna, out who's next. Find out who's next. All right, let's go to Julian Hartford. Uh, and see, let's ask her first. Hey, Julie. Hi. How we doing? 
Um, hanging, hanging in there. Are you married? For, uh, it's going to be 23 years on the 28th of this month. Oh, oh congratulations. Fantastic. You're a perfect person to ask. What is your biggest pet peeve? Um, of your partner there. What's say, your biggest pet peeve? Uh, I would say he likes to, um, uh, he, he, instead of giving a floss to clean his teeth, he, he kind of like sucks on it. Like, <laughs> like this weird sound that he does. Oh, it, it no. Drives, it drives me nuts. It just drives me nuts. <laughs> oh, hey, Julie, talk into your phone oh, real quick. So That's so good. Weird mouth noises are usually <laughs> at the top of the list. If, yeah. if he had yeah. to name one pet peeve of yours that you do, what would it be? Flossing too much? <laughs> Flossing too much? That's Y'all the must most have great teeth. Ridiculous pet peeve, Julie. It's like when you are at a job interview and, they're, and they say, what's your biggest weakness? You say, I just care so much. Uh, yeah, I just work too I hard. I just work too hard. That's the problem. Well done, Julie. You floss too much. All right, so that was our little detour. What's up? How can we help? Okay, well, I mean, oh, God. Um, so I, I, just, I, I've been to, I graduated from, uh, Financial Peace University. I actually spoke to Rachel's dad, um, um, Dave, uh, a few years ago, just before COVID. So we okay. didn't really get to graduate because COVID came into play, mm. but, um, you know, I had a lot of debt, um, over $50,000 worth of debt and, um, just a lot of stuff going on. Um, today, I can say that all the debt is paid off. Nice, Julie. Um, and and all I owe is, um, y- you know, my mortgage, pay off my mortgage, which I'm working on it with Gazelle Intensity. Congrats. You are using a yeah. lot of I language. Is your husband involved in this? No. Oh. I, I, okay. <laughs> She's backing up. It's those. Reverse, hey, reverse. It's, it's all that flossing, Julie. <laughs> okay. If you'll quit flossing, he'll partner with you. I mean, maybe I won't say um, entirely, not no. as much as I would like him to. Okay. That's hard. So, what's your question? So, my question is, you know, how should I? I mean, I try to. How should I approach? I, mean, I might be doing something wrong. Um, I, I, we usually we have about, I mean, like thirty-five bills each month. You know, we're both entrepreneurs. Um, I've been um, a little bit more stable than he is. Um, And I've just been pretty much paying all the bills. Um, And I I just asked him if he can just pay at least four bills, um, which is like help us to buy the food. We have four children. Um, Help us to pay, you know, a cell phone bill, uh, maybe some utility, and just to, you know, maintain the houses. And it's just it's just a fight with him all the time. Um, I just had a shut off notice the other day for my light um, because he just didn't pay it last month, and it just you know it just got a lot. So here's um, the thing, Julie. Y'all have been married legally for 23 years, yeah. But y'all are less married and more co-managers because the way you're talking about him is the way when I used to lead employees, they would talk to me about a coworker, mm. not about their life partner, the person they'd pledged their, ent- the person they said before God and their friends, I'm going to serve this person for the rest of my life and vice versa. Right. Everything is mine and I, and he didn't, there has never been a we in this conversation. And so often mm. when folks get excited about FPU, they get excited about a plan. They're going to get debt free. And it's about me. And it's about yeah. how I feel. He's got to be bought into a much bigger vision. Your Y'all's challenges is much deeper than money. Money's the big net flashing neon sign for y'all. But y'all are living separate mm-hmm. lives. Because I want to make sure, Julie, that, yeah. that I'm clear that it's not just a tactical, he's not paying a bill because I want him to help with it underneath all of that he's just not on board would you say like do you feel emotionally supported not, in the money process not at all like okay financially dra- okay. drained really. okay so here's so here's um, the difference julie here's what i'll say because there are couples we talk to who are on the same page with money but one is just naturally 
more detailed, right? There's a personality difference there too. That's Winston and I. I don't pay any bills. If it was up to me to pay a bill, we would not, our water would be shut off because I would forget. Like I just, I'm not, I'm terrible at details. So Winston takes care of it, but we're a team on it though. Like we, we know what's going on. We, I support him. Um, he supports me. Like there, there is a team aspect, right? So the tactical side of who pays and punches the, the buttons to pay the bills, that could be, yeah, sure. One spouse and that's fine. But the problem here is all the underneath stuff, right? It's coming out as, yeah, he's not choosing to help me do the tactical stuff. But really, it's that emotional stuff underneath. You guys are just not a team. You're not You're not there. And that's that's what you want to hit on. Right. So here's, here's right. where we start. Here's where we start, Julie. Y'all go out. And I want you to look him in the eye and hold his hands and tell him, I'm sorry for trying to have done this marriage all by myself. Uh, we're 23 years in. We got another 30 or 40 or 50 to go. I want us to connect and start today. And here's the vision that I would love for us to see. And I want you all to have a vision conversation. The tactics will follow. Jug and I get on the same page. We'll be right back. Chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper. Jumpstart your CFO career. Money is one of the biggest sources of stress for married couples, and that's why it's really important to learn the right way on how to manage your money and build wealth. So this Valentine's Day, instead of just an ordinary date night, put an end to money stress in your marriage. Or you can even bless a couple who's about to tie the knot. So our Valentine's Day sale includes all kinds of gifts, gifts that will strengthen your marriage and they're as much as 83% off. So it starts with the brand new questions for humans, conversations for couples. John Deloney. They're so that's fun, yours. Man. They're so fun. We use them like even in our team. Like we use the friends <laughs> ones. And oh, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, oh, it's so good. So you'll get these 15 or 55 conversation starters that will help you connect with your spouse. You guys will laugh together and really just have quality time. And, uh, or you can gift our bundle as the wedding gift pack to give to newlyweds or engaged couples to help them start off on the right foot. So these are not just ordinary Valentine's Day gifts. They actually have the potential to completely change your marriage. So go to the online store at Ramsey Solutions and shop the Valentine's Day sale and get 83% off before it ends. I love it. All right. Find out why yourself for yourself why blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window covering you'll get free samples free shipping and with the new promos they run every month you'll save even more use promo code ramsey to get the best deal so today's question comes from amy in south dakota my husband drank the Dave Ramsey Kool-Aid about 10 years ago. We worked extremely hard budgeting and paying off debt. However, every time we get close to paying off his credit card, something comes up that he has to buy. Most recently, he bought a very expensive rifle for hunting. This purchase bothered me, but it did. But he knew he would hold it against me if I didn't let him get the gun. Man. 
It was more. <laughs> Not that this is we'd ever happened spend that, in either no, of our houses. Are you about ready for this, though? It's more than we'd spend on a family trip. And he'll use it one week in a year for deer hunting with his friends. How do oh, I let this go man. and get back on track? So, so there was a lot. There's a lot of layers to that one for yes. me. I was like, ah, blah, blah. Not that that's probably happened in your house or my house for sure. <laughs> um, here's the thing. This call. Uh, the, first, your husband didn't drink the Ramsey Kool Aid. He did. <laughs> he read it and thought it was a good idea and thought it sounded fun, um, and was ish right. Kind of leaned into it a little bit. At the end here, she writes, it was more than we would ever spend on a family trip. He'll use it one weekend a year. So she's trying to turn this into a math problem that he should have known how expensive it was it, relative to our vacations, relative to it. This is not a math problem. This is a woman who feels betrayed mm. because her husband's acting like a child. And they agreed together on a vision and he refuses to do it. To do it. And so this is a betrayal. So... Amy, how can you let this go and help us get back on track? In my house, this would not be something we just let go of. This would be something that we sat down and said, not, I can't believe you bought that rifle. It would be, I can't believe you betrayed our vision that we agreed together where we were headed. And that's a totally different conversation, right? Absolutely. Yep. And it's, and it's hurtful. I mean, and Amy, you lose trust in it. Uh, There's frustration there, all of it. And I just want to know on his side, um, you know, ask him questions of like, you know, did you, did you consider what was happening? Like what, like, do you know what I mean? Like get to know, understand deeper him and his motivations and why he's thinking the way he is. And she she has a line here. Uh, I knew he would hold it against me if I, I didn't know. let him get this. Salva. Listen, I'm, sp- I'm talking to husbands here, but I'm talking to everybody. If you and your spouse agree on a thing. And one of you has the courage when you're having a bad day, right? We all do. We all buy that thing. And we're like, oh, I fell off the wagon. If one of your, if your spouse has the courage to call you out on it, never be one of those morons who holds it against them. You didn't let me get my gun. Shut up. You're on the same page. That's, you know who does that? Children. Elementary school ones, in fact. Not even middle school kids don't even act like this. Don't be like that. If somebody has the courage to say, hey, we, that's a $4,500 gun. That's not a part of our vision. Our vision was to be debt free, to change our family legacy, to yep. pay off our house. Don't do that. Say thank you for holding me accountable. And I know that hurts and it stinks and I really, really, really want that. And now's not the time. So how do people work towards that, John? Because that's just, a to me, that's maturity. Yep. That's a level of maturity of growing up and being a grown up so is someone that says, okay, that sounds great, but my need jerk reaction is to go there. My need jerk reaction is to be like, and kind of spite. Yeah. How do you start to work through that? I, I wish it was more complicated and it's actually pretty simple. And the magic word is practice. Mm-hmm. The magic word is practice. We've fallen into this trap that we believe every interaction is all or nothing and it's just not. And so decide, I'm going to change my identity. I'm not going to be a husband who says, this is my money, I can buy what I I'm not going to be like that. I'm going to be a husband that serves my wife, make sure that our home is taken care of and that we're all in partnership on this. We're co-creating this vision and we're living it out. And when you feel yourself getting angry, when you feel yourself ready to snap, and even if you do, you stop and you say, I'm sorry about that. You circle back and say, yeah. I acted like a fourth grader back there. I'm working hard and I'm sorry. Um, here's what I meant to say. Here's what I should have said. And we're going to keep practicing. And if you will practice over time, your body quits reacting like that. Yeah. Because it knows it doesn't help anything. Yep. All right. It's good. And some humility too. Ugh. Oh, sorry, this, Amy. Man, this gets me riled up, man. Sorry, Amy. It gets me riled up. And to the person out there who says, oh yeah, that sounds cute, dude. Um... I'm just going to go tell them and have this conversation. Get the Money and Marriage live stream tonight. We talk about this exact thing on how yes. to do that tonight. Yep. All right, let's go to Leslie in the LBC in Long Beach. What's up, Leslie? Hi. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. What's up? How um, can we help? I was calling. Um, I'm a single mother with a three-year-old son. Hey, um, uh, Leslie, just, Leslie, can yeah. you speak directly into the phone? Speak loud and proud and bold. Uh. Yeah, so I was calling because I'm go. having trouble starting. Um, I don't. I feel like every time I start, something happens. Um, so I feel like I can't never get past um, step one. Um, so like recently, um, I had 
back in 2020 co-signed a car for my son's dad. And unfortunately, um, the first day of the year, um, it got totaled. Um, someone lit it on fire. So that kind of put me on a big liability. So that kind of backtracked me. Um, so I just feel like something like that always kind of like prevents me from like putting saving, like because I'd have to take out savings and then cover like emergency costs like that. And I, so I just have like trouble like kind of starting, I guess, advice of like what to do or I just, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Leslie, I hear it in your voice. You have a lot going on. You're a single mom of a three-year-old, which is a lot, a lot of work um, that you're doing. So number one, I just want to commend you for even having the courage to start this, to start something new. Um, Because I know it can be scary and something different and you're going at it by yourself right now. Um, So number one, just know you can do it. Um, Thank you. Number two, I would say on a more tactical level, I want you to... Are you are you live are you doing in a budget? Like do you know exactly where every single dollar of your paycheck is going? Yes. Um, but I feel like even um though I kinda got a raise towards the end of the year, like I felt like uh, like how you guys say like my shovel is not enough. Yeah. Um, how so much I mean, do you like, make? To me even um like take home uh twenty eight hundred in a month. In a month, okay. In Long Beach, which is a very expensive place to live, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, and how much debt do you have? Um, so in total, it's 22000 okay. 17 is my car, which that's the hard part. It's mainly that big chunk. And then it's like 1700 in credit card. And then the rest is kind of like closed debt that you know, it's closed off, but I still need to take care of. Yeah. Okay. So Leslie, but for, so for your income, yeah. I mean, it's not, you don't have a huge shovel. I mean, I think before... I mean, after taxes, I mean, you're taking home about, you know, twenty five, twenty six thousand. So I really, really want you to up that income, Leslie. Um, and you, that means maybe even shifting careers, because once you can get this income in, even look, I want you to be looking at selling that car. Seventeen thousand is a big, a lot of car for you. Sell it, get a junker, and that's going to alleviate a lot right there. But getting on that budget and knowing exactly where your money's going, looking at selling the car and looking at a different career, I think is going to help a lot. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Shannon from St. Cloud, Minnesota. And it says on my screen here, you are debt free. Yes, we are. Congratulations, good folks. Congrats, you guys. How much have you paid off? Uh, We paid off $123,000. Whoa. How long did that take you? Two years and seven months. Wow. What were you making? What was your income? Um, we started off around 140, and by the end of the year, it was about 175. Nice. What do you guys do for a living? Um, I was working in healthcare, running assisted living facilities, and recently just changed to human resources. Awesome. Yeah, I'm a physical plant supervisor for uh, one of the state of Minnesota campuses. Very cool. What was this debt? It was our house. Whoa! 
Paid off your house. We yeah. did. <laughs> Congratulations. Y'all are official Thanks. weirdos. That's yeah, incredible. How much is this, how much is this house worth? Um, right now it's looking about 260, 270. Oh, amazing. How old are you guys? Um, we just had birthdays after we paid our house off, but I was 31 when we paid it off. I was 34. Oh. Wow. Early, Not even 35. Early 30s with a paid off house. Paid off yes. house. All right, so what happened two and a half years ago that you said enough is enough, let's do this? Well, after we got married, um, we started looking for houses and going through the mortgage process, thinking of a 30-year mortgage and being almost 60 when I paid off a house that freaked me out. So uh, we started looking at options. I didn't even want to buy a house at that point. Um, so I'd heard of Dave Ramsey before. I hadn't really listened to him or anything. Um, but I started listening to the podcast and hearing about the 15-year fixed, and that alone sounded way better than 30 years. So um, we then crunched the numbers and realized we could probably even pay off in five years. Um, once we started going, um, it was pretty easy, and we were paying off pretty quickly, so we changed our goal to three years, and then two years, seven months later, we were done. Oh, my wow. gosh. Wow. Yeah. Here's what I love about it. It's like you just did it. You know, there's a lot of people like, um, oh, but it's, we have this, we have this, we're gonna, blah, blah, blah. you guys just were like, we're just gonna do it. Like we're just gonna do it. I mean, and that's pretty intense. Like we even tell people, you can kind of let your foot off the, you know, the gas on baby steps four or five and six. But man, y'all just y'all did it. I mean, y'all threw so much money at this mortgage. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah I'm just looking at the math here. Y'all, y- y- y'all basically lived on half of your income for a couple of years, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did. We pretty much uh, lived off of hers and took. Well, yeah, lived off of hers and threw mine at the house pretty much. That's so great. Amazing. So how would you find out about this weird group of people that does all this? <laughs> um, well, I don't know. My family had listened to, I mean, had talked about Dave Ramsey forever. And um, once we started dating, um, you know, Larry had some debt. I didn't. And we kind of talked about that. And um, I just said, like, I, I don't want to really marry into a lot of debt or anything. So then he bought the total money makeover and nice. um, started reading that right away and paying off his debt. And then we kind of um, didn't really, I didn't really listen to it or anything after that. But then once we started doing the house, I think we really started listening to the podcast a lot more and going back to what, what he learned in the book and everything. That's, That's amazing. So good. So, um, what did you guys do to get out of debt? I see here you you got quite a bit of big raise. You got thirty five thousand dollar raise over the course of two and a half years. What were y'all doing? Were you hustling, side hustling, cutting? What was going on there? Uh, it was just um, raises at work, and then um, bonuses, and then um, with COVID hitting, actually, you know, working in healthcare, we got. Um, you know, like hazard pay, COVID pay kind of a thing. So we actually got paid more um, for working during COVID. So, And then yeah. we also couldn't really go on the vacations that we usually would go on and everything. So it was kind of, COVID happened at the right time for us to not be able to do anything. Yes. <laughs> that was awesome. I've heard that a lot from a lot of people. They're like, it canceled yeah. all my plans. So I saved all my money. <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. So <laughs> what was the hardest part for you guys? Because you guys are, you know, you're in your early 30s. People are just living their lives but you guys buckled down and paid off your house. So, like, what was what was hard about that? Because that, that's tough. You lived on half your income. Yeah, yeah reducing spending um, by putting some things on the back burner, um, such as since we bought our house, we didn't have air conditioning. And, you know, having people over in the summertime, it gets really hot and humid. And so you go take trips, you know, to the river, some go swimming instead of using the air conditioning. <laughs> so uh, great. Put off restoring a classic car I've had for 18 years and... Also, uh, we put off remodeling our kitchen too. So yeah, man. hey man, linoleum's yeah. not as bad as a, as a house payment. So good for you guys. Well, now you right. don't have a house payment. You can throw it all into right. your kitchen remodel. You got money. So who thought you yes. were crazy? <laughs> What's that? So y'all had to have people in your lives that just thought y'all were bonkers. Yeah, who? yeah. I have friends that tell me that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of geniuses walking around college campuses. I used to be one of them that have all kinds of opinions and ideas, and here you were just slowly grinding away in the shadows, right? Yeah. Very much, yeah. And uh, you're around a lot of fancy doctors who have it all figured out, and here you were just grinding and grinding and grinding, getting this taken care of. So who are your biggest cheerleaders? Well, for me, I would say the biggest one is my wife, because like she said, she didn't want to have any debt, so... She was cheering more than more and harder than anybody. <laughs> and care of. Yeah, and I think my parents they knew we were you know paying it off and kind of kind of you know kept cheering us on throughout the throughout the process. 
That's Damn. awesome, you guys. How does it feel to not have a house payment? It feels good. It that feels was my good, first yeah. loan and last loan that I will ever take part in. Uh, <laughs> it feels good to be done. <laughs> so if somebody came and just ran into you out there in the frozen tundra of St. Cloud and said, <laughs> How, what's the key to getting out of debt? What's the one thing you would tell them? Um, for me, I would say that you have to want it. Like for, I guess money is freedom, you know, freedom to leave a job you don't like, freedom to retire early. And you have to want your freedom more than you want, you know, a bunch of stuff that you don't even need. It's good. That's, That's so a good word. Good. For me, I say discipline, having an end goal and having the mindset that nothing's going to stop us from doing it. So have you had that paycheck deposit or two paychecks deposit and there's no mortgage? Has that happened yet? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How, yeah. Does, how does that feel? Yeah, we've been paid off for a while. Yeah. It feels good. Our bank account just keeps rising instead of, you know, staying stagnant with us paying off the house every yeah. month. Yeah. Oh, that's so incredible. So what are y'all going to do now? You, you don't owe anybody anything. What are you going to do now? We're going to do our kitchen remodel. We're going to yeah. fix up his car. We're going to go back on vacations and do whatever we want. <laughs> yeah, I love that line. We're going to do whatever, whatever we, we want. want. Well... Larry and Shannon, we have a copy of the Legacy Journey for you. We also have a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires because that is y'all's next step. There's no stopping this couple. We're also going to send you a copy of the Total Money Makeover, and we want you to give that to somebody that is in your life that you know they just need a gentle nudge. So here they go. We're going to send them on their way. and So we're going to give you that so you can pass that along. All right. Larry and Shannon from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Making a, a paid off $123,000 in two years and seven months, making 140 grand to about 175 grand, and they paid off their house. So exciting! Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt-free. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. What's up? What's amazing is that she said, I'm not marrying anybody in debt. And he's like, I'll fix that. I know, right? <laughs> I'm right on that. Hey, man, I saw her in some of the videos they had up on the screen. She's wearing camo and Carhartt. That's a special woman. And he said, I'm not going to let this one go. He said, not going gonna... to let this one go. Keeping her around. I'm going to keep her around. I'll, I'll, pay, I'll pay it off. Whatever I'll it takes. It I'll get the stuff paid off. <laughs> and I love, like awesome. you mentioned it. They just decided this is we're done with this. And when you want to, you gotta ha you gotta want it, and like and their intensity in that. I'm like, that's what it, that's a part of it, right? This whole emotional side of your money is real. Yes. And this mindset that when you put when you say something, do it. And I don't want people to miss this. The last few years has been hard on everybody, right? And for some folks, for millions and millions, it buried them, and it's been hard to move. It's hard to breathe. And for others, they said. We're going to take a moment while the world is on pause and we're all going to get so far ahead that we can, ne that, you know what I mean? That we can yep. never get chased down again. So if you're one of those couples, one of those people that have been buried low, it's time to stand up. The sun's coming out. Let's get after it. We'll be right back. shift today is 2 Corinthians 9 10. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Robert Louis Stevenson said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. I love Robert Louis Stevenson. All right, let's go out to Alyssa in Wisconsin. Hey, Alyssa, what's happening? Hi, thank you. I'm a big fan of the show, and I really appreciate what you guys do. Thank you so much. We're a huge fan of you. Thank you so much for calling. What's up? How can we help? 
I'm wondering if it is better to sell a vehicle while I still owe money on it or wait a few months until I can pay it off and then sell it to downgrade in vehicle. Great question. Okay, so how much do you owe on the car? 9500 9000 And how much do you make in a year? Uh, together, my husband and I make about 130000 with a lot of his overtime. Okay. And is that the only debt you guys have? Yes. We've already paid off six figures, and this is the last of it. Wow. Whoa. Alyssa, congrats. Um, yeah, Thank I would, you. I would sell, I, I mean, I'm sorry, I would, I would pay this off. You guys have plenty of income. Go ahead and just knock it out. And then, yeah, if you want to downgrade from there, um, then you absolutely can. It's just, a, it's a great market right now for used cars. So you can get a lot for it, but I would love it paid for. So that way you guys can just, yeah, you're all right. Debt free. And then when you're debt free, do you want to, do you want to downgrade at that point though? Cause the car isn't really a big issue for you. You just don't need it. Or what's the point to downgrade for you? <laughs> Um, so he's burnt out in his current career and wants to trade careers and the training in the new career is very expensive. <laughs> okay. So we're, we're wanting to pile up money as quick as possible for him to be able to get out of his current work situation. I gotcha. Okay. Um, and how much is the car worth now? About 21,000. Okay. Because I'm just trying to do the math. I mean, in a sense, I mean, if there's something that you guys want to do now and use that cash towards it, um, you could sell it, obviously, pay it off, get a new car, all that. I almost would just, I would just pay it off and then go what from is, there. Tell, tell me about this burnout. What is? What do you mean with your husband? Um, he's in law enforcement and it's been pretty tough on him. Yeah, um, it's been brutal. He's, the brutal. candle's been burning low. So I asked him to read from paycheck to purpose mm -hmm. and he's very convicted in becoming a pilot and oh, flight wow. training is very expensive. Yeah. So yeah. we're hoping to build up $80,000 as quickly as possible for him to get out. Gotcha. Okay. So here's after an emergency fund. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So when somebody, I would love for the two of you, and I'm speaking from somebody who's I've, I've got connections to law enforcement. I've shared a home with law enforcement. I, 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 that's my, I, my heritage. I grew up in the, with that crew. I've worked with that crew. Um, I would love for the two of you to go meet with a pastor or a marriage counselor, not because y'all are broken. In fact, the opposite. Sometimes the best time to go talk to somebody about future planning, just having a th neutral third party. And here's why. I, when people say I need to sell my car, that to me says there's an imminent, this thing's on fire and I'm throwing every ounce of water. I'm throwing the water bottles at this thing to try to put the fire out. And <laughs> I want to know, I want him to be able to have a space where he can speak openly and say, no, I can do two more years. Or once I put a period at the end of the sentence, when I, when I say, okay, in, in 24 months, I'm going to retire, I can take 24 months. It's often the unknown. I can't keep doing this. feels like forever versus I've got an exit strategy. And that's different than we need to sell the car. We need to sell the dog. Let's see if one of our kids would mind. We, like we're going to sell the couches, <laughs> right? And, and everything feels on fire when we have that level of emotion, that level of stress. But I want to know how imminent this burnout is. And I'll tell you, I have been in burnout where it's time for me to go now. I've been there. And I've also been mm -hmm. in, I can't keep doing this long term, which has ended up being a two or three year transition. So we did actually have that exact conversation and I did project about two years to the emergency fund and the tuition. And he's saying that he can't handle two years. Okay. So he's out, huh? Yep. Okay. So here's the other thing you've done then. You all have boxed yourself into it's either this or it's that. My recommendation would be that he leaves and gets a job at Home Depot, gets a job paying the bills. And, and I mean, serious, a job that's going to let him heal and that's going to let yeah. him kind of get his feet back underneath him. And I want him to go talk to somebody because that job he's been in is brutal. And, uh, and I also know this. My mom was the wife of a police officer for many, many years. You wear this too, right? Do you have someone to talk to? Yes. Okay, excellent. So – I'd love to see just a gap 
because this pilot training is, sounds great and it's what I want to do next and you're a, such a great partner and you want to support him fully, it's $80,000. Yep. Is that fair? Yep. So what we often do when we get scared or we get nervous or we have to jump, which I trust him. If he says, I got to go now, then you got to go now. We box ourselves into, well, then if we got to go now, it has to be $80,000. And I would challenge that assumption. Can we wait two years working a minimum wage job? We'll tighten up. Y'all have done such a killer job getting out of debt, yeah. really to set you up for this moment for when we need to make some major life changes. And I'd love to see y'all do it that way. Slow down a little bit. Um, and thank you for your service. Thank you for being a wife that walks alongside him during this mess. And we wish y'all all the best on the new journey. It's a great, I think thank it's you great. so much. Absolutely. And yeah, John, you're exactly right because the, the urgency limits all your choices. Yeah. When you're urgent, you jump just to, you know, it's just like this one thing and he's running into something he wants, right? Mm -hmm. To be a pilot, all that. So I think I totally agree with that advice. Take a breath. Mm -hmm. And you're coming off, yes, like you guys said, though, it's a line of work that's very difficult. I mean, it's been unbelievable. So, brutal. I mean, it's not like he was an accountant and he, you know, not that yeah. accountants don't have stress, <laughs> but it's a totally different situation right, there. And right. so, Yes, the emotions I'm sure are very high, um, yeah. and kind of just take a beat, take a beat. And um, man, can I, can I just take a second? So excited that the new book is out. Yes, um, pre-sales out, and we talk about this exact thing in the book on your past, change your future. It is directly the pre-sale is out right now. It's about that, about how do you take ownership of I've got to make a move now or I'm not okay now, and whether that's in work or in your marriage or in your home or with your kids or whatever. I've got life history worth of trauma, whatever's going on now, I gotta stop, grieve that, and then I gotta figure out what's next, right? Yeah. And we have a million books out there on pieces of this, and some of them are complicated, some are a mess. This is a book that I wrote specifically for everybody mm. that we can all understand, a mental health book, a relationship book, a what to do next book that's not complicated and full of theories and nonsense. It's just a simple book that's going to help somebody walk through that, just like this crew. So Alyssa, stay on the line, and I'm going to send you a free copy of this book and um, get you and your husband on your way to your to whatever comes next. So, so good. Cool. And I even love that title of owning your past. Like there's a level of you and even their story right yeah of sitting in what happened like you know yeah it's been hard what's happened yes and and to be in that and i feel like we can live in this world where we just run to the next thing that feels like it masks it right it yeah. makes it feel better but it's like this beach ball that's gonna it's gonna keep coming up i love so that deal it, with it will it. keep coming back and sometimes this, the ultimate destination isn't the tomorrow destination, yeah. right? There's going to be a season of rest. There's going to be a season of reflection or pausing or just working at Starbucks or Home Depot for a yeah. while yeah. until we can save up the money to do the next big thing. That's right. right? That's right. Well, I, and I'm so excited about this book, John. It comes out it's, when? When's like the actual? It actually comes out in April. If you buy it now, it comes with a, man, BetterHelp stepped up, comes with a free month of counseling. Which it's is huge. Huge. Hundreds of dollars worth of stuff, free audiobook, all kind of stuff. So you can pre-order today at Ramsey Solutions dot com and um, it's very very cool well Rachel I look forward to seeing you here in just a few minutes when we head over to the money and marriage event tonight join us money and marriage tonight go to RamseySolutions.com slash events I'd like to thank James Childs Kelly Daniel and the gang even Connor back there the gang. hiding he, he just looped all y'all together grouped y'all together gang. that's right America we're grateful for you be kind to one another and we will see you soon on the Ramsey Show Associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. 